All right, Eagles fam. Of course, when the news about Kellen Moore broke, you had goofy Dallas Cowgirls fans up in here saying stuff like, he's trash. And you'll see in the playoffs. Yeah? Gold in the regular season. My man. The last time the Dallas Cowgirls won something, people were dressing like this. <laughs> Not to mention, this was the hottest show on TV. <laughs> Listen, my man, I found a picture of Kellen Moore the last time the Dallas Cowgirls won something. Exactly. So how in the hell is it his fault? And of course, you had cats like this who say, Kellen Moore is trash. Just thinking he would do anything for us is a joke. It's a carousel of clowns. We need new blood, not traveling bums. Also, this dude says, didn't he make the cowgirls even worse? And didn't he have something to do with Herbert declining? Feels like Hurts is going to decline. Bro, did you not watch Jalen Hurts this season? He already declined. There's no if, ends, or buts about that. So, there's really only nowhere for him to go but back up to the top, and he will do that under Kellen Moore. Look at this. So those last couple of dudes are what I like to call social media parrots. They are a part of the go along, get along game. They don't want any beef on the internet, so they'll just go along with whatever the popular narrative is on social media, right? It's the blind leading the blind. Who gives a damn what someone else says about something that they had a vested interest in that didn't go well? Think about that in their opinion. Now, remember all everybody was talking about, oh, DeAndre Swift is trash. He sucks. He's soft. All this and that. And what did I tell you people? Don't listen to no goofy ass Detroit Lions fans. He's anything of the sort. That mama jumma right there is the truth. And of course, he was the truth. You got to make up your own. You got to you got to believe your own eyes. Right. But listen to this. Kellen Moore. Right. He's trash. But if you see right here, he led successful high-producing offenses in every year of his coaching career. It says that he was, listen, overall in four seasons with Moore as the offensive coordinator, the Cowboys ranked second in points per game. Right here, the Dallas Cowboys are averaging 29.9 points per game with Dak Prescott under center since 2019. That is the highest points per game among all teams and QBs during that span. So, so the Cowboys under him, when he had Dak Prescott, averaged the most points in the NFL. And he's trash? How, Sway? Remember, Kellen Moore's trash, Cletus. But look at this. The Cowboys had the most yards of total offense by a team in 2021 with 6,919. Almost 7,000 yards produced by a Kellen Moore-led offense. You had the Buccaneers with 6,009. They were the eventual uh, Super Bowl champions there. Look at this. 31.2 points per game as well. What are we doing here? That led the league over the Buccaneers. Look at that. 31.2 points per game. And the Buccaneers averaged 30 points a game. 530 total points. Obviously, that would lead the league as well. 511 for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Come on, man. Do your own homework. What more can I say? Top billing. Top On this particular video, I want to dissect the run game or just some of the concepts from Kellen Moore. Listen, we know that man is a pass game guru. There's no doubt about that. That will be the main event. So we'll do that on another video. But as far as the run game goes, I want to talk about the application and some of the core philosophies. Now, he does a great job at formation in you to death. Now, for Cal for the Cowgirls, I, I don't know how it is, but for us, we want to see a lot more motion. He checks that box. It's pretty much motion on 90-something percent of the plays. We want to see Jalen Hurts under center more. He checks that box. <laughs> he plays a lot under the center. And we want to see some pistol with some downhill runs. They get that in, too. Your man Kellen Moore does a lot of stuff. 
If you see right here, he's not afraid to go to 22 personnel. He put both of his backs in the game. Ezekiel Elliott, somebody who I actually think the Eagles should have a look at for a season. Why not? And you got Tony Pollard back in there, the under center. So this is just a, a regular fullback dive play, right? You get the double-double at the point of attack right here, right? And it's got a 90 flip bluff on to it, right? So you get that back like uh, acting like, you know what I'm saying, it's going to be a flip, a flip 90 play out to the nines here. And then uh, of obviously they could run that at a point in time there. You probably would get a big gainer. You can see it morph and pixelate. <laughs> it was so good it morphed and pixelated. But back on the center here, you get a similar look, similar blocking pattern. You get that duo, right, on Sue and Vita Vea here. You get that press, and it looks like it could be open there. But my man does a great job of reading right here, and he ends up bouncing this. But with that motion that you get here with Amari Cooper coming across the formation, he also is reading this. And he reads the bounce, and he ends up pinning the overhang defender as well. So a lot of help defense in the run game here. Motion, just like we want. On the center like we want. And then look, Amari Cooper pinning in right there. Run that again. You see him wait on this. That motion also adds the guy, right? Really influence, really influences the defense, defensive back to come down here. You can see with the flow wash right there, Amari Cooper engages and then starts to look, and he sees there. You can see the cat and mouse game between Devin White, right? I think somebody said he might be a free agent as well. That's definitely somebody uh, we can, we should be looking towards as well there. Uh, Devin White approaches there. Ezekiel Elliott bogs it down, but... That really made right here by Mari Cooper sealing off the edge as well. So we have guys who can definitely compete in this fashion. And you would think that the roster that they have for the 2021 Cowboys, not too dissimilar for what we have right now. And I would say that we probably have a little bit better of an offensive line as well. So think about that. Once again, you get that duo. They are really good with this concept, but they were really good with this concept. I believe we will be the same here. Uh, I'm just excited about the under center series, period. See right here? Press it. Then get that bounce on that angle right there. Got all kinds of people having to help. It's crazy how rosters change, man. See Steven Nelson out there. And, uh, you got guys out there like Singleton and all these people. <laughs> That's crazy, man. But listen, right here. That real down downhill flow right here. I can't wait to see how Jalen responds to this. Um, being able to make every play action or every handoff look like the, it's the same, no matter if it's play action or not. I think Daffy, Dak Prescott, and the Cowgirls did a really good job of that there. But see everybody getting involved in the run game there. I believe that's probably a reason why he likes those bigger uh, slot receivers as far as the run blocking goes there because you get a lot of runs that do end up off tackle there with the slot receiver helping. If you noticed over the years, the Dallas Cowboys have a very vocal offense, meaning the quarterback – is really in control at the line of scrimmage. I can definitely imagine Jalen Hurts taking to that because some of this stuff you can just make easy as pie, like this right here. If you see, if you're in a, if you're in a play call, right? So people talk about the runs or the lack of runs in in Kellen Moore's system. Uh, some of that goes both ways, right? We'll get into that a little bit here. But even if you have a called a called pass play, right, and you see two high safeties, what do you do? Why would you not take advantage of a light box if you're the Dallas Cowboys in this situation right here? That's just making it too easy. You see that light box? Audible to that? Run your zone play. Too easy, right? It's about the efficiency. Sometimes it's not about the amount of runs. It's the efficiency in the runs, especially if you're in a scheme that's going to be passing uh, that will set up the run. Right? We saw that with the candidates they were doing. That's why I told everybody, uh, wrap your brain around being more of a passing team because those are the candidates that they're looking for or they're looking at it, that they're interviewing there. But same deal right here. You know about these zone plays. Uh, combo up. You get those combo blocks. Reach blocks there. Comboing up to the next level. Uh, making sure you seal off there. Those reach blocks, combo blocks there. It should be easy as pie from you. So what's this right here? Clearly a called run with a pass tag on the back of it. That was executed poorly, but this was a called run in coming out of Kellen Moore's mouth, right? They were calling his zone play right here. 
guy was going to be some type of quick zone. But what do you have here? Why not? That's too much room and cushion. And in fact, they could have ran it a little bit better. Looks like CeeDee Lamb barely got the message here. All right, he could have hitched this out. You got Amari Cooper here. He's supposed to block this guy. You hitch this out in this one-on-one -on -one with the safety shooting this way, the linebackers far too far too wide over the cover there. He wants to take the path of least resistance. So shoot that out right there. Just a bad pass, but you can see them calling a run. Right? That's definitely a run play. They're, they're firing off block in there. You can even see Smith here comboing up to the next level, which is a little bit dangerous there on these type of plays because you get what, a one-yard cushion in the NFL book on a run, on a pass play. What do you consider this? You got Tony Pollard in motion here, so both your backs in the game, bang. Bang that to the outside right there. Oh, splatter whack the man. But obviously, you're going to have to put this in your run series. Not everything is a handoff to be a run. <laughs> if you get what I'm saying? You got both your backs in the game, so you have uh, 21 personnel right here. Tony Pollard coming in motion, which we want here. You get a bluff, right? You get that shell of a power play. Shoot it to the outside. Great blocking right here. Great scheme. Mari Cooper on the block right here. You got other receiver on the block. All you got to do is have Tony Pollard. This usually was going to be one-on-one -on -one with the great one right here. I believe that's DeAndre Swift. Obviously, we know where this is going right here. It's probably going to the house because he probably makes someone miss here. And he's good. See it right here? Look at that. Looking like it was going to be one of those kind of counter G schemes, right? Pulling that opposite part, opposite guard. Pulling both guards, right? So a guard and guard scheme. You got that gag pull going on there. Gag power. Shoot it out to the side. It's behind the line of scrimmage. So that's why you see Smith here able to get up way past that one-yard cushion because it's still technically a run play because you throw it behind the line of scrimmage. Oh, is that not a run? Come on, people. Now, check this ending sequence right here. You'll have a trade. You got both your tight ends right here, so you're working out of 12 personnel. You do that just to do this. So, obviously, this is a called run, and you shoot it out because of the leverage. Shoot it over there to Amari Cooper. You can see the leverage given up there by Slay right here. Why not? Be just like a run. You get yourself, what, six, seven yards that way. Then you come back with this. Check this out. You have plus splits. Spreading them out like this. Just to call a draw. Tendency breakers right there. I'm telling you, man, Kellen Moore is a whiz kid. How many people you know could you get? that had a number one offense, a top five offense, multiple times in the entire NFL, and they did that in your division, oftentimes against you. So I don't know, man. People hating on this right here, just a part of the go along, get along gang, and I don't subscribe to that theory, all right? So let me know what you think, baby. South Jersey, stand up, of course. Millville, Brisbane, Violin, Atlantic City, Salem. Uh, shout outs to Cinnamon Sin. Shout outs to Trenton, Camden. Shout outs to everybody in the entire Jersey. North Jersey, I get a lot of people from North Jersey. Y'all know I love North Jersey to death as well, man. Shout outs to everybody out there. Patterson, Orange, North, Elizabeth, Union City, Bayonne, everybody, right? Jersey City, stand up. All right, man, but let me know what you think about your man, Kellen Moore. All right, big shout outs out to Delaware, of course. Shouts out to Elton, Maryland. Shout outs to the entire Philly. South Philly, what up? What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. Crazy. 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 Crazy.